In this video, we'll be going over how you create and transform your objects. So we're back in Cinema 4D. So to create an object, like I did in the previous video, you can either go to create object and then there's a whole list of objects right here. Or you can go to the top and click down, click and hold, and then you have a bunch of objects you can create. So I'll create a cube. You can change the, the dimensions of your object. So the default is 200, 200, 200. We can make that bigger or smaller by either typing in or using these arrows at the, at the side of the um, input box. You can also use these orange boxes on the side of the object. So you can go in the z-axis, the y-axis, and manipulate your um, box however you like. So for more of the free birds, you can do it just by eye. For the more analytical people, you can be precise and manipulate your object by typing. You can also increase the segments if you need to for each side. And if you want, you can add a fillet and that will add curves to your object and you can decrease the radius and manipulate the number of subdivisions. So we can create a cone and we can move it over. This red arrow allows you to move it over. So if you want to move things in the x-axis, you can grab this red arrow and move it if you want to move things in the Z axis, front and back, you can use the Z, the um, blue arrow. And if you want to move things in the Y axis, you can move using the green arrow. You can also move objects two axes at a time. So if we want to move in the X and Z axis at the same time, I can click this green object and move in two axes. You can do that for the Z and the Y. And then you can do that for the Y and the X. And if you just want to move it anywhere, you can just click into gray space and move your object. Now let's go over some selection options. You can go up here and then we have the live selection. The shortcut for that is nine on, on the top of your um, keyboard. And so that has this white circle that anything under the white circle is being selected. And then if we go back up here, we can go down to the rectangular selection and that shortcut is zero on your on the top of your keyboard and that allows you to put a box around your selections. Now as far as transforming your objects, your transformation options are move, rotate, and scale. So the shortcut for move is E. And you have to have your object selected to move it so you will not see the manipulator if you don't have an object so selected. So if I select the object, I see my move tool. And so moving the X, the Z, and the Y. And now R is your rotate tool. So if I want to rotate in around the Y axis, so you remember our Y axis is up and down. If I want to rotate around that that's the green 
if I want to rotate around the Z axis, that's the blue. And then if I want to rotate around the X axis, that's the red. Now in, let me go back to zero, zero, zero for these. Now in Cinema 4D, it's different than other programs. Other programs, when they list their rotation, which I'm um, hovering over right now, they usually list X, Y, and Z, but Cinema, 4, Cinema 4D has H, P, and B. So if you think in relation to an airplane, H is your heading. So that's the direction the plane is heading. So whether you're going to the left, to the right, where where am I going? Your pitch is the direction of the nose of the plane and it's pointing vertically. So the nose, look, luckily we have a cone, so the nose, where is my nose pointing? And then the bank is the direction the wing rotates around the fuselage. So wings, we're moving up and down so if you that's how you can think of instead of having the x y and z we have the h p and the v uh, sorry the h p and the b next we have scale and the shortcut for that is t so we can go up and down in our scale as we have created our objects right now if you try to scale in certain directions, it will not work because you have to go into component mode in order to do that. So in order to do that, you have to press C. You can also go up here and, and click this button right here, make editable. So you always have to make your objects editable in order to use the different components. So I'm going to press C. Uh, let me undo that. If we go into the, our objects manager, you see how our cone looks. And then as soon as I press C, it changes the icon. So you can tell when your object is editable by seeing these vertices or, and this icon. So now if I scale in the X axis, it actually works. And I can scale in the Z axis and I can scale in the Y axis. Something else you have to be careful of when you're um, making your objects editable. So I'm going to press 9 for the live selection and select all of these. So now this happens with cones and with cylinders. When you make it editable, it is not one object. So if I move it down, this is separate. No clue why Cinema 4D does this, but that's just a fact of life. So when you make your cone and your cil cylinders editable, you want to immediately, I'm gonna go back into object mode. You want to have your object selected and then hold down this icon and we're going to go to the connect so um, if I just create the connect this is why the parent and child relationship is very important in Cinema 4D I need to make the cone a child of the connect and then it will be one object so if I go back move this down wait let me try to connect it first so um something that i always do with the connect because you can see if i take off the connect this is how our object looks but if i put back on the connect there's like this black and this white highlight so something that i like to do is when i use the connect go to this object tag object tab and then under phone mode i want to go to average so that it looks like it did before. 
and then select the connect and press C to make that editable. And now when you move it up and down, it is connected. So we're going to do this again with a cylinder. I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to make it editable. And so if I select and move down, we can see it's not one object. So another thing that we can do, we're going to do the same procedure, but you select the cylinder, come over here and hold down alt and then select the connect and it automatically makes the cylinder a child of the connect. So that's another shortcut so that you don't have to move the cylinder under the connect as a child. You want to click the connect, fong mode average, press C. And now when I move up and down, it's connected. So that's a very important thing to remember. If you make your cylinders and your cones editable, you need to do that process. Um, that does not apply for your cubes and any other. You're going to have to do that for a tube as well. But a sphere or a cube or a capsule or a torus, you don't have to do it for. A couple more things that I want to go over. I'm going to delete these objects. I'm going to create another cube. Now something, the next thing I want to go over is the world and the object coordinate system. The object coordinate system is the local system of an object. Each object is, divide, is defined in its object space. The world coordinate system is the universal coordinate system for all objects in the scene. When you look at the home grid in the viewport, you will see the world coordinate system. World space is constant and immovable. So when you look at the origin, this is your world space. This is what is always. But if you look at your object and this manipulator, that is the object space. So if I go into rotate mode and I rotate it, it's no longer on the object space. As you can see, this X, this arrow is still pointing this way. This um, Z is still pointing this way. And then the green arrow is still pointing up. But on our object, if I go into move mode, our Z is pointing this way, our X is pointing this way, and our Y is pointing this way. Now, you can move your object according to its own system, or you can move it according to the world system. So right now, I will be moving it according to its own system. Back and forth. But if I press W, I have switched well, let me go back. This is the local system icon. If I press W, this is the world system icon. And now I can move it according to the world system. So now when I move the Z axis, I'm moving back and forth according to the world system. This is applicable and in, in, in you use this for different reasons. Um... Especially when you create, when you're creating actual objects and not just primitive objects, moving according to the world or its object system is very important. And lastly, I want to go over the pivot point. Now you can only manipulate the pivot point when it's editable. You cannot manipulate the pivot point before you do that. So let's press C to make this editable. And over here we have our enable axis modification. So naturally your axis and your manipulator is going to be in the center of the object. But sometimes if for animation purposes, um, you might want to move the axis. So if I click to enable axis modification, and then I move the axis down. 
and then I you always want to make sure you click this again so that you're back into your regular mode because there can be some issues if you do not um, deselect that so now we can see if I move my object back to zero 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 now the axis is at the bottom of the object and so now if I use my transformation tools I'm rotating from the bottom of the object instead of the center of the object so that's very powerful in the next video I'm going to be going over moving specific components